So now we begin the next conference with uh, Lenneke Williams. privately since 1969 and I've been teaching at a music school in The Hague, Holland, since 1990. I've been asked to talk about the special performances that I've been giving over the past few years. These projects with pupils from the music school are always based on a specific theme. To illustrate my lecture, I will be showing a few video clips of these performances. In the next few days, I will be rehearsing one of these programs with a group of children from the Ritmeja Music School in Udin who are present here and they sit there. We are rehearsing the next few days and I'm looking forward to do that. Um, the performance is a fairy tale and called The Princess from the Orient or in Italian La Principessa Orientale. I wrote this story years ago and looked for existing music to accompany it. The children here have received the sheet music last Christmas and I'm sure they have been rehearsing it a lot already. Yes. Uh, now they are here to make a complete performance out of it in a number of workshops. You can imagine this will take us a few days. And uh, there's a lot of work to be done. But of course you are welcome to visit our rehearsals to see how we are doing. Uh, the rehearsals are in the music school of Cremona. Uh, the music school is called Mol Monteverdi and is uh, not far from here. You can find it in the program on the map, small map in the program. Besides discussing the performances, I'd also like to talk about the importance of stimulating and encouraging pupils in their musical education. I'm mainly talking about those pupils that do not have the ambition to become professional musicians. Nevertheless, they get joy and satisfaction out of playing the violin. When motivated to work hard, many of these students are capable of reaching a very respectable level. Of course, motivating and stimulating talented children during their process of becoming professional musicians is equally important. A good example of that is the Dutch violin teacher Koosje Wijsenbeek, whose group of talented young pupils under the name of the Fancy Fiddlers are giving concerts at a high level. Performing in a group like that is an enormous challenge and stimulus for those children. But most music school teachers have pupils with varying talents. Some are musical and show aptitude for the instrument, while others are less talented, learn slowly or struggle with their instrument. Children often have various additional hobbies besides the violin, like sports, ballet, scouting, etc. Sometimes I wonder whether they have any time left to practice. In Holland there are children with two working parents who nowadays attend after school daycare and who only have time to practice after dinner. And this is, in my opinion, too late for the younger pupils. Music school teachers in Holland find themselves regularly confronted with the results of the economic difficulties their schools are dealing with. This often means shortening the lessons for the, for the students. 
Fortunately, most of my pupils have 30 minute lessons and some even 40. Still, it's difficult to get everything done in the available time. Despite the limited possibilities and the limited time, I still make sure there's an opportunity to play music together during the lessons. The children enjoy playing with piano accompaniment. They strive to make the lessons so enjoyable that they look forward to the next lesson. Most of my pupils stay with me for quite a long time. They don't plan on becoming professional violinists and thus don't feel the need to change teachers. Often, they will attend their lessons with me until the end of their high school period and then they leave the nest. From the moment they enter my classroom until they leave the nest, I have a goal which I hope to reach with each and every pupil. My goal is to help them achieve a level of ability which will allow them to play the violin pleasurably for the rest of their lives. The higher their level, the more chance there is of a lifetime of joy with their violin. What do I mean with a good level? Well, for example, when off to college in a different city, a student would, could join the local student orchestra. Or, once employed, a pupil could join a decent amateur symphonic orchestra or a small ensemble. Often, the students will find a new teacher in the new, te in the new city. I love to see them continue in their musical development. But until that point is reached, I like to keep my pupils. The normal lessons alone aren't quite enough to achieve this level. As much as the children like to play, they need extra stimulus to keep motivated, to keep on going. Recitals are fun, of course, and they do happen regularly, but many pupils enjoy playing together even more. This is possible, often weekly, when preparing for one of our performances. It's not enough just to study at home and only hear the encouragements of your parents. More is needed to stay enthusiastic. About 10 years ago, I started organizing performances somewhat bigger than the usual recitals. I wanted the children to enjoy making music together. I wanted them to familiarize them with different types of music. I wanted them to feel comfortable and relaxed on stage. And most of all, I wanted them to learn to have self-confidence. Of course, you need some facilities to organize the, these pr presentations. The music school where I teach has the facilities to do this. Spacious classrooms where I can rehearse with many children and a nice theater with good acoustics and beautiful lighting. These performances are a means to stimulate the children to stay motivated in their weekly lessons. Year after year, they participate in the various performances. Hardly anyone quits. Most of them make it through the danger zone, you know, those first years after primary school, without problems, because they have each other. The children in the group become friends. Just a few months after the project finishes, they ask me whether I have a new plan. Obviously, I don't always have one. You should realize that if you want to do a project like this, much of the work will be done in your spare time. Music schools generally do not have a budget to cover this work, and it often takes hours and hours of preparation. The reward, however, comes in many different ways. The group always improves. Their technique their ensemble playing 
and the sense of teamwork progresses. Imagine their pride in being collectively responsible for the final result. Due to circumstances, I wasn't able to arrange a performance this past year. At the end of the year, this was very noticeable. The children's motivation was stretched very thin. It became clear to me that the children need something to look forward to. They need a goal to work for, something that makes all the studying worthwhile. That goal should not be too far away. It should be visible on the horizon, so to speak. Recently, I asked the children to write about what they wanted to do with their violin in the future. It was remarkable that none of them had thought about that before. Most of them said that they wanted to keep playing together, in an orchestra, in a band, or just with some family members or friends who also play an instrument. I'm convinced a person who has music as a part of her life is a much happier person. I would like to illustrate my lecture with three movie clips. These videos were made by the father of one of my pupils. These tapes are between 5 and 10 years old and the images are not always as clear as we used to nowadays. The first scene is from two performances with a gypsy theme. The second scene is from a performance with Scottish music. And the third one features music dating from the 1930s and 40s. In all the performances, the children are playing without a conductor. They are trained to listen. To listen to each other and to the piano. The first Gypsy performance originated from a book that I had read. It was the true story of a 12-year-old boy from Belgium who joined a Gypsy family in their travels around 1930. It was such a good book that I adapted part of it to be recounted on stage. I searched for some Hungarian music and arranged two pieces from the collection of Natalia Baklanova to accompany the story. During the performance, a friend of mine, who is also a new musician, told the story and played the double bass at the same time. The second performance was a bit wilder. I had found a, book, a music book called Gypsy Violin, part of a series from the American publisher Mel Bay. There are many nice two-part and three-part pieces in it. The children were fond of these. The parents made the costumes and enjoyed that. To make things look realistic, the children had smudges on their faces from the campfire. The youngest pupils were not able to play along yet, but they loved being there and singing along. Here is the first scene. Yeah. Start the film. <laughs> Thank you. 
in the summer. He made a number of CDs and wrote a few books with fiddle music in the traditional Celtic style. My pupils enjoyed this mu music tremendously. I arranged music from the book A Breath of Fresher Airs for two vo uh, violin parts, cello, but bass, accordion and piano. To make a performance out of these pieces, I started to look for an exciting story. I found the book Thomasina by Paul Gallico. Thomasina is a cat who has great adventures. The story is set in Scotland and is exciting, joyful and sad, which you can hear in the music. An Irish friend of mine 
told the story to the audience. Her accent sounded to our Dutch ears really like Scottish. <laughs> and added to the mood of the story. She also sang and played the guitar in the performance. I bought 20 meters of cloth with a Scottish print at the IKEA and gave every pupil a piece of it. Mothers, grandmothers, neighbors, everyone was called in to help make Scottish skirts or other clothing. And they did. Most of the boys didn't even mind wearing a skirt. I later sent the videotape to Ian Hardy. He responded in a letter saying that he was flattered and felt honored by it. Here is the second scene.
in the 1930s. I named the performance Little Stardust after the famous song Stardust by Hopi Carmichael. A friend of mine specializes in old blues music. Together we searched for suitable songs to be arranged for this performance. We chose beautiful pieces like Hoki Carmichael's The Nearness of You and The Man I Love from George Gershwin. But we also picked the Charleston and of course Stardust itself. When the audience entered the theater, it looked like a real nightclub, including a smoky atmosphere. This will be the last scene.
These performances are, in my experience, a powerful tool in encouraging students in their motivation and perseverance with their music. The following points, I believe, are essential when doing this type of project. Firstly, quality and pleasure are equally important. Secondly, offer different styles of music. Thirdly, make sure that every pupil has an attainable goal. And fourthly, last but not least, let them play freely, let them perform without stress, and help them gain self-confidence. Thanks for your attention. Thank <laughs> you. 